Hall's belief that the flesh of the peacock will not putrefy even though kept for a considerable time. As an outgrowth of this belief the peacock became the emblem of immortality, because the spiritual nature of man, like the flesh of this bird, is incorruptible. The Egyptians paid divine honors to the Ibis and it was a cardinal crime to kill one, even by accident. It was asserted that the Ibis could live only in Egypt and that if transported to a foreign country it would die of grief. The Egyptians declared this bird to be the preserver of crops and especially worthy of veneration because it drove out the winged serpents of Libya which the wind blew into Egypt. The Ibis was sacred to Thoth, and when its head and neck were tucked under its wing its body closely resembled a human heart. Simon Falcon's Antiquities The black and white Ibis was sacred to the moon. But all forms were revered because they destroyed crocodile eggs, the crocodile being a symbol of the detested Typhon. Nocturnal birds were appropriate symbols of both sorcery and the secret divine science of sorcery because black magic cannot function in the light of truth day and is powerful only when surrounded by ignorance night. And the divine science is because those possessing the arcana are able to see through the darkness of ignorance and materiality. Owls and bats were consequently often associated with either witchcraft or wisdom. The goose was an emblem of the first primitive substance or condition from which and within which the worlds were fashioned. In the mysteries, the universe was likened to an egg which the cosmic goose had laid in space. Because of its blackness the crow was the symbol of chaos or the chaotic darkness preceding the light of creation. The grace and purity of the swan were emblematic of the spiritual grace and purity of the initiate. This bird also represented the mysteries which unfolded these qualities in humanity. This explains the allegories of the gods the secret wisdom incarnating in the body of a swan the initiate. Being scavengers, the vulture, the buzzard, and the condor signified that form of divine power which by disposing of refuse and other matter dangerous to the life and health of humanity cleanses and purifies the lower spheres. These birds were therefore adopted as symbols of the disintegrative processes which accomplish good while apparently destroying, and by some religions have been mistakenly regarded as evil. Birds such as the parrot and raven were accorded veneration because, being able to mimic the human voice, they were looked upon as links between the human and animal kingdoms. The dove, accepted by Christianity as the emblem of the Holy Ghost, is an extremely ancient and highly revered pagan yonic emblem. In many of the ancient mysteries it represented the third person of the creative triad, or the fabricator of the world. As the lower worlds were brought into existence through a generative process, so the dove has been associated with those deities identified with the procreative functions. It is sacred to Astarte, Cybele, Isis, Venus, Juno, Mylitta, and Aphrodite. On account of its gentleness and devotion to its young, the dove was looked upon as the embodiment of the maternal instinct. The dove is also an emblem of wisdom, for it represents the power and order by which the lower worlds are maintained. It has long been accepted as a messenger of the divine will, and signifies the activity of God. The name Dove has been given to oracles and to prophets. The true name of the Dove was Ina or Ies. It was a very sacred emblem, and at one time almost universally received. It was adopted by the Hebrews. And the mystic Dove was regarded as a symbol from the days of Noah by all those who were of the Church of God. The prophet sent to Nineveh as God's messenger was called Jonah or the Dove. Our Lord's forerunner, the Baptist, was called in Greek by the name of Jans, and so was the Apostle of Love, the author of the Fourth Gospel and of the Apocalypse, named Jans. Bryant's Analysis of Ancient Mythology Insert The Phoenix on its Nest of Flames From Lycosthene's Prodigiarum, Ac Ostatorum Chronicon the phoenix is the most celebrated of all the symbolic creatures fabricated by the ancient mysteries for the purpose of concealing the great truths of esoteric philosophy. Though modern scholars of natural history declare the existence of the phoenix to be purely mythical, Pliny describes the capture of one of these birds and its exhibition in the Roman Forum during the reign of the Emperor Claudius. Continued. In masonry the dove is the symbol of purity and innocence. It is significant that in the pagan mysteries the dove of Venus was crucified upon the four spokes of a great wheel, thus foreshadowing the mystery of the crucified Lord of Love. Although Muhammad drove the doves from the temple at Mecca, 
Occasionally he is depicted with a dove sitting upon his shoulder as the symbol of divine inspiration. In ancient times the effigies of doves were placed upon the heads of scepters to signify that those bearing them were overshadowed by divine prerogative. In medieval art, the dove frequently was pictured as an emblem of divine benediction. The Phoenix Clement, one of the Anunnic N fathers, describes, in the first century after Christ, the peculiar nature and habits of the phoenix, in this wise there is a certain bird which is called a phoenix. This is the only one of its kind and lives five hundred years. And when the time of its dissolution draws near that it must die, it builds itself a nest of frankincense, and myrrh, and other spices, into which, when the time is fulfilled, it enters and dies. But as the flesh decays a certain kind of worm is produced, which, being nourished by the juices of the dead bird, brings forth feathers. Then, when it has acquired strength, it takes up that nest in which are the bones of its parent, and bearing these it passes from the land of Arabia into Egypt, to the city called Heliopolis. And, in open day, flying in the sight of all men, it places them on the altar of the sun, and having done this, hastens back to its former abode. The priests then inspect the registers of the dates, and find that it has returned exactly as the 500th year was completed. Although admitting that he had not seen the phoenix bird there being only one alive at a time, Herodotus amplifies a bit the description given by Clement they tell a story of what this bird does which does not seem to me to be credible that he comes all the way from Arabia, and brings the parent bird, all plastered with myrrh, to the temple of the sun, and there buries the body. In order to bring him, they say, he first forms a ball of myrrh as big as he finds that he can carry. Then he hollows out the ball, and puts his parent inside. After which he covers over the opening with fresh myrrh, and the ball is then of exactly the same weight as at first. So he brings it to Egypt, plastered over as I have said, and deposits it in the Temple of the Sun. Such is the story they tell of the doings of this bird. Both Herodotus and Pliny noted the general resemblance in shape between the phoenix and the eagle, a point which the reader should carefully consider, for it is reasonably certain that the modern Masonic eagle was originally a phoenix. The body of the phoenix is described as having been covered with glossy purple feathers, while its long tail feathers were alternately blue and red. Its head was light in color and about its neck was a circlet of golden plumage. At the back of its head the phoenix had a peculiar tuft of feathers, a fact quite evident, although it has been overlooked by most writers and symbolists. The phoenix was regarded as sacred to the sun, and the length of its life 500 to 1000 years was taken as a standard for measuring the motion of the heavenly bodies and also the cycles of time used in the mysteries to designate the periods of existence. The diet of the bird was unknown. Some writers declare that it subsisted upon the atmosphere. Others that it ate at rare intervals but never in the presence of man. Modern Masons should realize the special Masonic significance of the phoenix, for the bird is described as using sprigs of acacia in the manufacture of its nest. The phoenix which is the mythological Persian rock is also the name of a southern constellation, and therefore it has both an astronomical and an astrological significance. In all probability, the phoenix was the swan of the Greeks, the eagle of the Romans, and the peacock of the Far East. To the ancient mystics the phoenix was a most appropriate symbol of the immortality of the human soul, for just as the phoenix was reborn out of its own dead self seven times seven, so again and again the spiritual nature of man rises triumphant from his dead physical body. Matty al Hermetists regarded the phoenix as a symbol of the accomplishment of alchemical transmutation, a process equivalent to human regeneration. The name phoenix was also given to one of the secret alchemical formula. The familiar pelican of the Rose Kawa degree, feeding its young from its own breast, is in reality a phoenix, a fact which can be confirmed by an examination of the head of the bird. The ungainly lower part of the pelican's beak is entirely missing the head of the phoenix being far more like that of an eagle than of a pelican. In the mysteries it was customary to refer to initiates as phoenixes or men who had been born again, for just as physical birth gives man consciousness in the physical world, so the neophyte, after nine degrees in the womb of the mysteries, was born into a consciousness of the spiritual world. This is the mystery of initiation to which Christ referred when he said, 
except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God John E. 3.